And here he is, Rangers GM Chris Young on the fan. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm well, guys. How are you all? We are doing outstanding. Thanks again for uh, for joining us here. I guess first question is going to be about uh, some of the young guys. Uh, Evan Grant reporting you guys are preparing to send Kumar Rocker into action in the Arizona Fall League. Can you confirm that for us? Uh, no, not ready to confirm that. We're still um, getting Kumar uh, really uh, onboarded to the organization. He's out in Arizona. He's doing great. He looks really good. It's been fun seeing video of him throwing out there, and uh, he's doing a great job. But we're, we have not decided uh, if he'll be going to the Fall League quite yet. Okay, and ha- have you made a determination yet when uh, Josh Young could be up? Uh, we're working through that one as well. Josh is doing everything he possibly can. He's played great. Um, you know, we're, uh, seeing how it fits rosters expand September 1st. And my expectation is that sometime in September, we will see Josh, uh, this specific date we have not decided. And some of it will depend on, uh, you know, how things go over the next few days. Chris, I- I've been reading a little bit about some of these guys, uh, Kumar Rocker included doing like some, some barefoot work. Are they doing groundwork, uh, barefoot right now is it like a new thing that people are doing <laughs> yes that's uh, i think a few of our pitchers have gotten into that uh that um it's connecting your energy through your feet to the ground and uh um i think is it called earthing or grounding or something like that and uh yes it's i've seen a few of our players doing it and um you know if that's what helps them uh feel their best i'm i'm all supportive i have not tried it so i can't speak to it yet i don't know if you guys have uh, recommendations on how to do it or if it's uh <laughs> worthwhile uh uh to try then uh let me know <laughs> who came up with this idea it sounds kind of like existential or something i don't know uh, yeah it does sound existential that that's not something internally that we have uh, taught or promoted uh but uh, i think some of these guys have um i don't know if they've read it or uh watched it on youtube or what but um they certainly uh feel like it helps them and uh, mentally if that's what it takes uh, i support it I'm barefoot right now. I think I'm having a hell of a show, boys. So, just like the record. No show. wonder it stinks in here. Uh, CY, Nate Lowe just got selected as the American League Player of the Week. He's been fantastic, especially since the All-Star break. The only AL player with more homers and higher OPS is Aaron Judge of the Yankees. What have you seen from Nathaniel since the All-Star break and really just an outstanding season offensively he's had for your club? Yeah, Nate's been tremendous. I mean, it really, we've seen him come into his own. Um, he, I think he's understanding who he is as a hitter, uh, how he's being pitched. Um, you know, I think he's been around Corey and Marcus and been able to see them um, throughout the year and uh, really watch and, and learn uh, a lot about himself. And I think this is a normal course for uh, for young players. Um, you go through your first full season and you, you go through the ups and the downs. And Nate had a lot of bright spots, um, had a stretch where he really struggled last year. And then came into this season and uh, has really, like I said, come into his own, which has been fun to watch. Um, you know, he is so locked in. It's been just impressive, the bat quality, um, and just knowing himself, knowing what he can hit, and then getting his pitch and driving it. He has not missed it. So this past week has been incredible. Really, really happy for him. It's a great thing for Nate, great thing for the organization, and, uh, and I think we're looking forward to big things from him in the future. Hey, Chris, I'm like the crusty old guy of the group here on the show, and – I'm a guy that appreciates like hitting streaks and some of the old things. And Adolis had the hitting streak. Do we lose track of hitting streaks and things like that because of all the numbers that we have in baseball? Oh, you know, I'm probably too too close to things to say that. I mean, I, I certainly keep up as a fan as well. But I'll tell you this: I was as in, I was as into this hitting streak as any hitting streak I've seen. I mean, watching Adolis. And, uh, you know, I think he got the infield hit in Colorado to, to extend the hit streak. And then you know, yesterday I was rooting like crazy for him. So I, I can't speak in general, um, you know, the way a normal fan perceives things like hitting streaks. But I certainly was really into this one. And uh, I thought it was great. I thought it was impressive, um, especially the, the type of player that Adolis is, uh, to have this long a hitting streak. It says a lot about his maturity and development as well. Chris Young here with you on 105.3 The Fan, the Rangers GM show brought to you by the Can Academies. How surprised were you uh, Dallas Keuchel did not have more success, and, and where do you go with him from here? Yeah, look, I think uh, Dallas had pitched really well in AAA um, and you know earned a, earned a call-up. I think some of that was because of how thin uh, our pitching options have become with John Gray and Spencer Howard on the I.L., uh, we felt like we needed to add Dallas to give us some protection in the event somebody else goes down or that John or Spencer don't make it back. Um, you know, I, I think that 
obviously we were hopeful that uh, Dallas had figured something out at AAA. Uh, the first start didn't go uh, as well as we had hoped. Um, he will get another start, and we'll go from there and see. Uh, but certainly, you know, um, this is a player with a great pedigree. Uh, he knows how to compete. Um, his location at this point needs to be um, – you know, close to perfect, and I think there were some mistakes made the other night. Uh, hopefully he can re- uh, regroup and, and um, come back and give us a solid outing next outing and uh, and build off of the good starts he had at AAA. We were talking about a, a particular pitcher uh, right now for the Yankees, Chris, who just got put on the IL due to uh, an infection in his leg uh, stemmed from a <laughs> tattoo that he just got. You're chuckling. You already know this story. You've been chuckling about this for at least a day, I assume, like the rest of us. Uh, what's the weird Weirdest, or maybe is that the weirdest IL injury that you have seen uh, in your time in the sport? You know, I don't remember any specific IL injuries um, unrelated to to really baseball. Um, I, I do remember I had a teammate one year, and I won't say who or which team, uh, but I did have a teammate come in at the end of the season. He was starting a game that was very meaningful. We were in a playoff chase. And he said he was so sore. And I said, from what? And he's pitching this day. I said, from what? And he said, well, my, uh, my tattoo artist came by the room last night, and I got a, I got a new tattoo along his rib cage, his pitching rib cage. And he was sore from it the day before a huge start in September. So, oh, um, so it, it actually it's, it's, it's uh, maybe more common than I realized. But this is, uh, you know, the Chapman incident is unfortunate. Um, you hate to hear about an infection for anybody, but – uh, certainly, um, I hope our players hold off on their tattoos until after the season. <laughs> Chris, did you punch that guy in the ribs right in the tattoo area? Did you just rear back and wanted to. straight right in the ribs and just walk away? <laughs> I, I wanted to, but uh, unfortunately, we did not win that game either. So, um, in any event, it's a good lesson. And, you know, for young players, um, little things like that are, are impactful, they're meaningful. And, uh, you know, you have a, an organization and their fans and teammates all depending on you. You have a responsibility. And so uh, it's a good lesson for people to, to understand. Final question. It's a two-parter, Chris. I always love hearing about your playing days and your background here as a DFW kid and all that. Favorite teammate when you were playing? Favorite Ranger when you were growing up? Well, favorite Ranger, I mean, I had I had several. Uh, you talk about the early years when I was really little. Buddy Bell was, was my favorite. Mm, and then Buddy kind birthday. of evolved into uh, into uh, Nolan Ryan when Nolan came to the Rangers uh, really began my love of pitching um, he inspired that I wanted to pitch at that point and um, and, and kind of wanted to be Nolan Ryan so uh, Nolan was was really my favorite Ranger and then in the you know the mid 90s um, Pudge obviously was a huge one and then uh, you know and then had the opportunity to play with you know several of the best teammates I've ever had I mean uh, Michael Young uh, was an absolute absolutely tremendous teammate a uh, great friend and now a special advisor as well. And uh, I lean on him heavily. Um, he's, he's tremendous. He's got a great baseball perspective. Uh, love his values, what he stands for, how he sees the game. So, um, you know, glad glad that we were able to be teammates, glad that we're able to work together now. And then um, from the pitching side, Kenny Rogers was one that I was a young player, uh, got to the big leagues, and Kenny – was just tremendous for me. He really taught me a lot about the mental side, about competing, about how to be a professional, uh, what it took day in, day out. Uh, my rookie year was, um, you know, a pretty successful year in my eyes, and a lot of that had to do with Kenny and the way he uh, mentored me. No relationship, uh, relation with you and, and Mike Young, right? No, no. Uh, we are not related at all, but well, he, uh I, if so, I would be. I would have been a better hitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, since you brought him up and your buddies with him and all that, he's obviously everybody's favorite. Uh, could could Mike Young be on board in an increased capacity coming up in the in the not too distant future? Uh, well, I, I would certainly welcome that. I love Michael, and uh, you know, but I think um, most importantly is that he is enjoying. Um, you know, the, his life with his family. And when the time's right and when he's ready, we would certainly welcome that. Uh, that offer has been extended, but nonetheless, um, he'll tell us when the time's right. Hey, see, well, I, I want to ask you something. Is when you know you're the you're now the top dog. Are people treating you different? Do mm-hmm. people try and avoid you in the office and stuff like that? Do you like <laughs> you're like a super friendly guy, and I know you're tough minded. But do people avoid you? That where they used to stop by, maybe talk to you. Do they just kind of avoid you now? 
I, I haven't, I, I don't see anybody hiding when I walk down the hallway. I haven't seen anybody crawling under their desks or getting away from me. So I think that's a good thing. I hope I haven't changed. Um, they must be hiding well. Yeah. That, good job. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Has anyone tried to bring you McDonald's uh, since we had you on last week? <laughs> no, no McDonald's, no McDonald's, no Whataburger or Chick-fil-A or in and out either. But, um, but no, we, we have a great group. It's, uh, everyone here, I hope that we have an environment where everyone feels comfortable. If anything, it's been the opposite where uh, just an outpouring of support. Um, we have great people, and uh, you know, I think everybody's excited to spread their wings a little bit and uh, take on a little bit more and help us get to, uh, get to the top here. Chris, I, I just want to highly encourage you, man. I get it. You don't want to do the McDonald's thing too often, but do yourself a favor, okay? Sometime in the next seven days before you get back on the air with us, please do yourself a favor and get you one of these McDonald's hash browns. Dear God, just one of them, Chris. I, I promise you it'll change your life, bro. I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. If I'm out and about for breakfast, I'll get a McDonald's pass around. Gosh, you won't regret it. You're the best, CY. All thank right. you so much for your time, and, and yeah, have a good week. Thanks for having me.